Hey guys, Ron here. And by now you may realize that I'm, for better or worse, very agreeable. That means I like it when I'm on the same page as everybody else. I constantly try to find ways to share things I love in ways that would satisfy the most people possible, and that includes Pokemon. Of course, everybody has a different thing that they look for in a Pokemon, but what if I took all the criteria that people use when rating Pokemon and tried to find the Pokemon that has a good balance of all of these traits? What if I could find the perfect Pokemon? Of course, there isn't a perfect Pokemon. That's what makes this franchise awesome. Every Pokemon can be appealing in different ways. In this context, perfect doesn't mean that a Pokemon is the most worthwhile, but simply the Pokemon that satisfies the most amount of people. Because after all, every Pokemon fan has a different opinion of what makes a Pokemon great. So after asking my followers what they think is the most important aspect of a well-made Pokemon, I devised a chart in which I can input how well each specific Pokemon does in all of these categories. I'm not expecting any Pokemon to get maximum points in every category, but the perfect Pokemon should be able to get a good balance of points from most of these categories. Let's use Pikachu as our first example and take our time inputting its data first so you guys can get familiar with the categories that make up this chart. Then we'll go quicker with other mods. From the data I've gathered, it seems like design is the most important aspect to most fans, so a Pokemon can get a perfect maximum of 10 points in that category. Of course, the fanbase's opinion on any Pokemon's design is very inconsistent, since design is made up of other subcategories that appear in this chart, so design is gonna be very general. Pikachu gets a 10. It's the Pokemon with the most design updates, making it the perfect mascot. It looks like what it's supposed to, and it looks great. The next category is coolness, with a max of 8 points, since people thought it was slightly less important than design, but still one of the most important aspects of a Pokemon. Coolness is basically how satisfying it is to see this Pokemon in action and imagine being its trainer. Pikachu is a good mascot cause, even though it's cute, it's still pretty cool. It's fast, can shoot electricity, and has a sleek design. It gets a 7. Next in the first three general categories is uniqueness. It's less important, so it has a max of 6 points. It's not necessary, but it's always preferred that a Pokemon isn't too similar to anything that came before it. Since all the Pikachu clones came after Pikachu, it gets a full 6. Now we're done with the three general design categories. Next are the less general categories. I like to call them the charisma categories. Personality is a big deal to fans, so a Pokemon can get a max of 10 points. Does this Pokemon have a noticeable personality? Does it pull it off well and is it endearing to be around? Pikachu gets a max of 10 for that. No surprise. Next is the intimidating or badass category. Is the Pokemon imposing or impressively menacing? Pikachu, while adorable, is still formidable and believably powerful looking so it gets a 4. Not high, but that's the point of the next category. Cuteness. Is this Pokemon adorable? Cause the best Pokemon seem to be able to showcase both an intimidating and lovable side. That's a formula Ken Sugimori himself has implemented into Pokemon designs. The perfect Pokemon won't be too scary, and conversely, won't be too cute. A balance of both would appeal to the most amount of people. Pikachu gets all 8 points. Next, is this Pokemon entertaining? When you see it, are you having fun? Pikachu gets a 6 out of 6. Time for the depth categories. Concept and execution have 10 points to receive. Does this Pokemon have some kind of concept that is either clever, thoughtful, or well-rounded? And more importantly, does it successfully execute that concept? Pikachu gets a 9 out of 10. It's not the most genius idea for a Pokemon, but it was done perfectly. Lore and backstory is important to a lot of fans like me, so 8 points can be received. Does a Pokemon have some role in the world it inhabits? Does it have a story or Pokedex entries that flesh out the concept or personality of this Pokemon? Pikachu is pretty average in that respect, so it gets a 5. It doesn't have as much lore as a legendary, but the species is mentioned. Origins is next. I love looking into the real world inspiration for every Pokemon, but not everybody does, so it gets 6 points, and of course, Origins doesn't make or break a Pokemon. Pikachu gets a 4, cause its creation is interesting, but it's not really based on anything too compelling. Believability is next. For 6 points, does this Pokemon feel like it could inhabit the Pokemon world? And does it fit in with the rest of the franchise philosophies? Heck yeah, Pikachu does! And some people seem to enjoy Pokemon with character development. Has it gone through evolutions in a compelling way, or do you at least learn more about this Pokemon's personality the more you use it or study it? Has the character been shown in multiple lights, or does it have a story arc in a piece of Pokemon media? Pikachu gets a 3 out of 4. It has developed, but evolves further and may have even stagnated over the last decade. And the last 3 categories are ones that I personally don't use when critiquing a Pokemon, but are important to a bunch of fans. Competitive is a big deal, so Pikachu gets 1 out of 8 points. It sucks that people will underrate a perfectly good Pokemon because it's not good in battle, but that's the reality of the franchise, so a perfect Pokemon would have a good design, personality, concept, and be good at battle. Next is purpose. Is there a reason for this Pokemon's existence? Is it part of the story? Is it good on a team or did it balance the meta? This one is just a little boost because almost all of the Pokemon here, including Pikachu, get a 6 out of 6. 
And lastly, is this Pokemon overrated? I never condone this as part of a Pokemon's rating, but there are a bunch of people who place Pokemon like Pikachu lower on their list because it's overrated. The perfect Pokemon would be able to match the hype. Pikachu is objectively overrated, so it gets 1 out of 4. There is a maximum of 108 points possible, but I'm grading on an 8 point curve, so we're pretending that there are a maximum of 100 points, which gives Pikachu an 86 or B plus on this test. Anything above a 90 or A minus is exactly the kind of Pokemon we're trying to find. Any Pokemon between 93 and 95 points is nearly perfect, and anything above 96 is an A plus on this test. Any Pokemon that got an 89 is a very honorable mention since they could have gotten a 90 on a different day. And any Pokemon between 88 and 86 is a soft honorable mention. Let's roughly go through the top 30 of each generation from the results of the official Pokemon of the Year poll. That's the 240 most popular Pokemon in the franchise. I did exclude a bunch who I knew were obviously not perfect Pokemon, so in the end I only rated around 130 Pokemon, and I'm only gonna mention their strengths and weaknesses. I like every Pokemon here, there's nothing personal. Let's make this casual. Charizard is the most popular Kanto Pokemon according to the poll. It's often associated with Pikachu, so it's funny that it got the same exact score, 86. It's cool, has some of the best character development across media, and is great competitively, but gets serious points off for being less adorable and having a relatively simple and not very original concept. It's also like the most overrated Pokemon on the list. Umbreon misses honorable mention status with 84 points. It's cool and one of the few to have a great balance of both intimidating and cute features, but its personality and entertainment value is relatively low. Everything else is balanced, but not exactly good enough to push it into a higher tier. Rayquaza is an honorable mention with 89 points. Its concept, execution, and design are wickedly cool and badass. And almost all legendary Pokemon here are in OU or Uber tier, so of course it's good in battle, but its lack of real personality and the fact that it ain't cute prevents it from joining the perfect tiers. Lucario is our first Pokemon to make the list, with 91 points. It has zero relevant flaws according to my calculations, discounting it being overrated and some thinking its legs are weird. It's well designed with good lore, origins, and concept, while achieving good scores in the trifecta of coolness, toughness, and cuteness. Chandelure, one of the least overrated Pokemon here, it's far from adorable in terms of personality, it's hard to get attached to, but it's pretty balanced in other categories. Greninja though makes the top tier with 97 points. That's an A plus for the most popular Pokemon here. It got maximum or almost maximum for so many categories like design, coolness, entertainment, origins, etc. with no negatives. This guy is a contender for the number one spot here and the answer to our question. Mimikyu made the cut with 90 points. It's one of the only Pokemon here to excel in all four charisma categories, personality, intimidation, adorableness, and entertainment value, but it suffers in coolness and lacks any real origin outside of Pikachu. Amazing though. Dragapult is our first Pokemon in the nearly perfect category, with 95 points and no flaws. The Dreepies in its head even bump up the adorableness to average status. Other than that, it's amazing in categories like design, coolness, concept, and competitive viability. Gengar makes the cut with 90 points. Its best category is personality, getting the first 10 out of 10 after Pikachu. Its only semi-flaw is that its concept is relatively unoriginal and simple, but it's executed amazingly. Tyranitar also gets a 90 and a 10 out of 10 in design. It's a really well executed concept, as intimidating as can be, but far from adorable with a lousy personality, preventing it from being in the nearly perfect tier. I know that's the point of Titar, but we're trying to find the Pokemon that excel in the most categories available for a Pokemon. Gardevoir makes honorable mention status, no real flaws, just no landslide wins in categories with a lot of points to get. Just a well balanced Pokemon, but to make the final list, you gotta be extremely cool or cute or whatever it takes. Garchomp excels in obvious categories like intimidation, but it's a little too scary so it doesn't satisfy those who prioritize adorableness, but it's also not the most coherent Pokemon when it comes to origin and concept. Zoroark is balanced, not too scary so it doesn't fail in the cuteness category while nailing the badass and personality category. Sylveon misses the honorable mentions with 85 points. Max 10 in personality is amazing, but it's a little too cute for its own good, with questionable design choices marring its execution. Rowlet gets a disadvantage in battle prowess and intimidation as a pre-evolved Pokemon, but it has exceptionally high execution, personality, entertainment value, and of course cuteness. Toxicity makes the cut with 92 points. No flaws at all, but not too extreme with the wins. Bulbasaur suffers from almost everything that Rowlet suffers from, while also being slightly less entertaining and well-rounded, literally. Lugia, with its maxed out design, makes the nearly perfect tier with 94 points. Its only real pitfall is its personality. Flygon also gets a 95. This is such a respectable mon. No flaws at all. 
almost maxing so many categories. Luxray gets a 92, even though it maxes out categories like design, concept, and origins. If it didn't do so terribly in the competitive category, it would have been in the highest tier. Hydreigon gets a 91 with strengths across so many fields, especially intimidation and concept, but lacks personality and endearment. Aegislash gets relatively low, but mostly because of its design, not really having a personality. It's a great Pokemon in general, but not even close to a perfect one. Decidueye gets a near-perfect 93. It has no flaws, but only didn't make the top tier because it's not the best competitively. It's both badass and adorable, so it makes sense for it to grade well. But Corviknight is basically perfect with 96 points. It maxes out in design, concept, and execution, and it's still adorable, so it doesn't fail one bit. Typhlosion just makes the cut full personality and is cool while still adorable, but it barely has any lore and isn't great competitively. Sceptile shows that while this list is biased, I'm being very honest with the ratings. It only really fails in competitive, but it doesn't receive any extreme amount of points in any category. Honestly, his chillness is why I was drawn to him in the first place, so I'm still proud. Piplup is obviously failing in intimidation, competitive, or backstory, but maxing out the cuteness bar. Volcarona, though, gets a lower than expected 86 points, cause it lacks personality and adorable even though it's super cool, well designed, full of inspiration, even good competitively. But Neuvern also gets an 86 with lack of enough lore. Lycanroc, almost making honorable mentions, it has a good balance of badass and cute, but is average in a lot of fields like design and origins and even fails competitively. Snom is here, but cuteness and max entertainment value doesn't save it. Snom's the weakest and least intimidating thing on the list. Eevee does the best of all basic stage Pokemon here with 80 points, maxing out personality, design, and cuteness, but fails in the obvious category. Scizor, though, makes the cut with respectable points across the board, but fails to reach the next stage because its personality isn't as great as others. Blaziken gets an A. Its only real weakness is lore and backstory. It maxes out design and competitive and manages to stay relatively adorable, unlike so many Pokemon that get high points in intimidation. Infernape is close with basically the same spread as Blaziken, just less competitive prowess. Haxorus makes a good showing with the same strengths and weaknesses as Infernape. Gudra rises above the pair with 92 points, its only weakness being design. It's far from bad, it's just not perfect. But it does get so many points from other categories, considering it's both adorable and imposing. Zeraora also doesn't have the best design and execution. Alchemy fails in so many aspects like coolness and believability, but racks up so many points in cuteness, entertainment, and even competitive. Dragonite just makes it with 91. It's the only dragon to ace all four charisma categories. It's just not that unique and it's design has some flaws. Ampharos is doing well with 90 points. Could have been in the next tier if it was better competitively. Darkrai though makes an uproar with 96 points. It's basically perfect, receiving an A plus by maxing out design, coolness, intimidation, concept, lore, origins, and competitiveness, only staying away from a full 100 points because its personality ain't the most endearing. The well-designed superior maxing out concept, execution, and origins, and doing well in so many categories other than personality. Talonflame with an 88, it's as cool as can be, but it's not too interesting. Incineroar does well in so many categories, maxing out coolness, entertainment, and origins, yet could have gone to top with a better design. Design is also the only thing Cinderace could have done better, considering it's both cute and fierce, super entertaining, and amazing competitively. Mew though gets 96 points, only failing in coolness and intimidation, but getting A's and A pluses in design, personality, cuteness, entertainment, concept, execution, lore, and of course, competitive. Metagross almost makes the cut. Its design, coolness, and execution are maxed out, but it ain't cute and has no origins. Golisopod makes it with 90 points. It obviously maxed out the intimidation and coolness categories while failing cuteness and personality, but it unexpectedly maxed out concept too. Zacian and Zamzenta are nearly perfect, no flaws at all, with a slightly better design they could have been in the top tier. Like the Pokemon with the most points so far, Mewtwo. Its perfect design, concept, lore, and entertainment value gave it 98 points. It would have received 100 if it wasn't overrated. Sucks that it's a category people actually value. Mewtwo does way better than God itself mostly because it has no personality and isn't that adorable. Zekrom and Reshiram made it though, with 92 and 91 points respectively. Zekrom is cooler and has a sicker design, but Reshiram is cuter. Eveltal has a measly 84 points, because it has minimum personality and charm and no character development, but at least its design is super cool. Solgaleo and Lunala nearly perfect with 95 and 94, Solgaleo only failing in cuteness, and Lunala dragging a bit with design, but both with a lot of lore and origins. A feast for theorists and story followers. Arcanine though, this guy has 97 points. It's second place behind Mewtwo with a perfect design and execution, both intimidating and cute, and even has great lore. 
This is the definition of a perfect Pokemon. Suicune is nearly perfect, only lacking in personality, but of course it maxes out concept, execution, lore, and origins. Milotic makes it with a 90, and Lapras with a 91. Its design and execution is perfect and has much personality and adorableness, would have been in the top tier if it was better competitively. Absol with no weaknesses, doing so well in the depth categories, more personality, and I'd say this Pokemon would be perfect. Snorlax gets 90 points. Its personality is lackluster, but it's entertaining and inspired. I wish Crobat got higher than 84 though, but it's not cute or personality driven even though it's cool and was well executed. Swampert gets 90 points. No weaknesses, but it doesn't really max out anything special either. Same exact thing with Crocodile. Xerneas though is designed well and sweeps in the depth categories, both cute and imposing. If it had some sort of personality, it would be in the top tier. Surfeshed is also nearly perfect. It does exceptionally well in all of the charisma categories and even concept, backstory, and competitive. Ninetales is so close, only real flaw is its lack of competitive use, but it's got a nice mix of average and high points. Furt, while resurging in popularity, has the lowest amount of points on this list. I like Furt, but it honestly fails in almost everything except for cuteness and entertainment. While Torterra does well in so many aspects, it maxes out with its fresh design, concept, and execution, but only really fails in competitive, and that's not its fault, that's Game Freaks. Whimsicott is a soft honorable mention, its design could be slightly better and it's far from intimidating, but it has a great personality, is super cute and very entertaining. The flawless Halucha, however, gets an A. It does well in all of the categories that dish out a lot of points, it's very well rounded. Shaman has the benefit of two forms for its consideration, it's not the coolest or most badass, but it does well in the things that you'd expect it to excel at. Hatterene's charisma points are impressive and it's both intimidating and cute. Blastoise misses an honorable mention, its concept and backstory aren't the strongest and some criticize the creativity of its design, but it's obviously cool. Agron's design is perfect and is as cool as can be, but those who prefer cute and or competitively viable mons don't support it. Even worse is Dialga. Its lack of personality and endearment shows. It's an awesome legendary, just not perfect. Vaporeon makes it though. It maxes out design, concept, and adorableness, and has an awesome personality, while still being a bit badass. Ho-Oh lacks personality and its execution could be better, but its great lore, origins, and sheer coolness shine through. But Latios and Latios, god damn, they're basically perfect. They have no flaws and excel in design, coolness, and cuteness, with an entertainment edge for Latios and a slight edge competitively with Latios. Gallade almost made it and could have gone up with better metagame use, but it's both badass and relatively adorable. For Alligator's design is pretty straightforward and its concept isn't anything special, but it's as intimidating and cool as can be. Altaria's only real flaw is in competitiveness, but only cuteness racks up an extreme amount of points. It's beautiful, but average among the rest. Staraptor does a little better, not the most unique or backstory driven, but it's cool and fine competitively. Fairlinks is apparently bad and competitive, but it's a fine example of Pokemon that is both tough and cute while being super entertaining with tons of depth. Heracross is an honorable mention, it has no flaws at all, but doesn't do extremely well in any field other than coolness and the fact that it is not overrated. Kyogre gets all the cool points too, its concept, lore, and origins are wicked, but it barely has personality and isn't cute. Togekiss has the same amount of points, lacking in origin and intimidation, obviously excelling in cuteness, personality, and even competitive. Como O makes it though, it's cool and has depth, but as you can tell, it's not absolutely adorable. Appleton's design isn't the best, and it ain't cool or good at battle, but it's very funny and has some good lore, origins, and cuteness. Mawile does better, its design could be more fine-tuned, but its charisma points are off the charts. If only its current metagame usage was better. Gliscor makes it with no flaws, could have been cuter, but it's still endearing. Samurott, in my personal opinion, has a rad design and is super cool. Marshadow makes it too. It's cute and kinda badass. Berloom is a mention, its only real flaws are its super vague origins. Extra Drill's cool as heck, but could use some lore. Nido King maxes out design and intimidation while being cool and well executed, but it barely has a backstory and is far from cute, while Nido King gets 89 because it's both cute and tough, with a slightly less cool design. Houndoom makes it though, if it were good competitively, it would have been in the nearly perfect. Grimmsnarl is at the top of the nearly perfect tier. I don't expect a goblin Pokemon to be handsome, other than that, it's cool, intimidating, and entertaining with lots of depth and battle prowess. Groudon though gets a 10 out of 10 in design and execution. It has overall 89 points because it has no personality and isn't close to cute. Weavile makes it though, no flaws, it's even a bit cute. Bisharp's personality is lackluster, but other than that, it's amazing. But Entei is nearly perfect. 
It's as intimidating as can be and even quite adorable. It would be like number one if it were good competitively. Deoxys's concept and execution are perfect, but it has the least amount of personality and charm. Raichu is slightly below it, would have made the cut if it was good at battling. Santa Scorch is only lagging behind because of its low amount of lore. But top tier for Rotom. Its flaw is a relatively elementary design, but it has max personality, is a bit spooky while super cute and entertaining, its concept is intriguing, and its lore is expansive. Trevenant's not adorable and it sucks in battle, but it has a healthy smattering of concept, lore, design, coolness, and intimidation. Tapu Koko makes it. It's got a lot of good, but the design isn't the most refined. Jolteon has a good showing in the general and charisma categories, but it has subpar lore, origins, and battle prowess. Rosary is great, no flaws at all, it's both intimidating and beautiful, a visible personality with a pretty design. It ties with Pangoro, no flaws either, its bareness keeps it relatively cute while clearly looking tough, it's executed amazingly and even has some backstory to back it up. Ludicolo's trailing in battle, toughness, and design by a bit. Articuno, while a better Pokemon, does worse on this test, it has no personality, character development, or usefulness in competitive battling. Rillaboom, however, is super well-rounded and only misses being nearly perfect because of its competitive showing. Ribombi's cuteness means it's one of the least imposing mons here. Sandslash unexpectedly does worse. It doesn't have much of a personality and sucks in battle. Alakazam only really lacking in an endearing personality, but great concept and design. Gyarados excels in almost everything, maxes out basically all general and depth categories, and even does well in battle. But since it has an atrocious demeanor, it's only nearly perfect. Which sucks because it's intentionally mean. Donphan is an honorable mention without any flaws, even maxing out design, entertainment, and concept, but having relatively average scores. Raikou also has no flaws and excels in the things you expect it to. It would have been higher if it were better in battle. Darmanitan is basically perfect for having respectable numbers in the general categories, charisma categories, and depth categories. Escavalier is super cool and badass with great lore, but it's not very charismatic or fast. Riviere could have gotten higher if it were better in battle, but does well in pretty much every other category. Cobalion gets 86 points with a very criticized design, personality, and execution of its concept, but its lore and origins are so good that it stays afloat. Verizion does a bit better and makes the cut. Its only real flaw is the execution, like Cobalion. Terrakion, though, is nearly perfect, people citing its human-like face as the real roadblock in its perfection. Some dislike its brown color, but it's like a rock fighting type. It's the best in battle among the trio and has tons of personality. <sighs> so who won? Here are the honorable mentions, all great Pokemon but either extreme in one direction or not extreme enough in all directions. Then we have the Pokemon who just made it, getting slightly over 90 points. They all have what it takes to be perfect and usually lack some kind of final push. Here are the nearly perfect Pokemon, they excel in many fields and have only minor flaws in this test, which are outweighed by their extreme aptness in multiple categories, and here are the basically perfect Pokemon, with 96 points. Darmanitan, Rotom, Latios and Latias, Darkrai, Mew, and Corviknight. Number 3 and 2, with 97 points, go to Arcanine and Greninja, and the most perfect Pokemon, with 98 points, goes to Mewtwo. They dreamed of creating the world's strongest Pokemon, and they succeeded. If you want to see a more personal version of this video with only categories I think are important, comment and leave a like, especially if you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and check the description for the t-shirts I made for you guys, my Patreon, or click the join button to become a member and get awesome rewards like seeing my videos days early and discounts on shirts. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you guys very soon.